Eh, hey, Maria, come here, oh. Puri kayo, Maria. Eh. Hey. Mm. Eh. Hey. Maria. Maria. Tu la kawa wali mama u. Kakati Maria mkwano. Olevi muna nge skuru fizi wezizezi tugoya. Tuli kustamu ya kubiri batuba nje soka. Kade nune awata tutese zane mama uonu. Umami unakutwari. Tukuwa do umami unakutwari. Oli de Maria. Hello guys, my name is Jerry Sesanga. I'm an author, a journalist, and a filmmaker. Uh, this movie you have seen, the, this excerpt is from my movie called The Baby Bride, and it highlights uh, the plight of the young girls in Uganda who have to undergo child marriage. Uh, Maria was a very brilliant girl in class. She was performing very well, and then all of a sudden she returns home and she finds that her parents had accepted money to give her in as a bride. So she goes into this marriage at just the age of 14 and she, what you can see on screen is that um, she faces that stigma of a girl who gets married early. Her childhood is robbed and uh, her future is as well destroyed. This is one of the ways that I use to highlight these issues that are happening in Uganda. Um, this is because my mother was a child bride. By the time my father died, I was nine months. My elder sister was uh, two years, and my mother was 19. So she must have gotten pregnant at around the age of 16, 17, and she went into marriage at the age of uh, 16. Therefore, she was limited by what she could. By the time my father died, she was so much limited by what she could do and she couldn't do as a woman because of lack of sex informa sexual information and services. She ended up getting pregnant at an early age, dropped out of school. So when my father died, she was left alone, no skills, no opportunities for us. Uh, the thing is that no one ever talks about these issues in Uganda. Our culture is so full of taboos. Uh, for example, it is very much extreme. You cannot say in Uganda, I'm going to the toilet. Maybe you can say, I'm going to the back, I'm going to the back room. So because uh, we don't speak about issues directly. Um, if a girl gets pregnant, she is simply married off, no one supports her, or gives her the health care she needs, and as a result, thousands of young mothers die while giving birth in Uganda. Stigma keeps women silent about the issues that they face. Um, men don't really care about these issues. My mother never even told me about the challenges she faced in life. I just found out on my own as I, this, as I was growing up that she was really struggling. There is a time when her salary was smaller than the amount of school fees she was paying for us. We ended up being evicted in the house just because of child marriage. Um, these taboos, the, the, these barriers of silence, prevent our society from moving forward and developing. They perpetuate poverty, misery, inequality, injustice. Child marriage, reproductive ri rights, and girls' access to education are, are often written off as women's issues. 
But what we never acknowledge is that they affect all of us. They affect the, the, the girls from achieving their potential and their children, and they hold our societies back. I, I didn't realize that at that time, but I had a very, very miserable childhood. All around me, the circle, the cycle of poverty churned around. You can see for yourself what happened, the kind of society that I came from. We will never really address the challenges facing Uganda if we don't discuss them openly and debate them. For example, when it comes to HIV AIDS, uh, the Ministry uh, of Health had a campaign in the past. They were portraying HIV AIDS as something very, very bad. So we were afraid as we were growing up, we were so much afraid. So I, we would not even come closer to people having HIV because we thought maybe by just association it's contagious. But after some time, when the message has changed, there is, uh, the, the, it's normal, you can have ARVs and survive, so there is so much hope, the narrative has changed, and there is progress in the country. When it comes to child marriage, my community, my community silence makes us blind to the ways it shapes our lives and futures. I was lucky because a combination of luck and persistence in my case, my mother was able to provide for us uh, because uh, by the time she, she, my father died, she moved back to her parents' home and then she was able to, to work on a certificate in education. She got a te teaching role at an international school and she brought, back these no she brought back books at home for me. So I got exposed to international fairy tales, the Snow White, the Humpty Dumpties, and then later on, uh, it developed into uh, these uh, books, uh, the Robinson Crusoe's, The Great Expectations. I, got, I brushed with the authors like uh, William Shakespeare, very, very wonderful authors. And that's the difference. But when it comes to other people in my society, they really consider me very successful. I don't own a, a, a house, but I drive a car. And, uh, because most of, my peop most of this, the people that I grew up with um, did not complete school. I, at primary level, that is elementary school, some, some dropped out at that level. 70%, I can say, did not go to university, did not have access to education because there is poverty in the society, because there is these taboos, these, these cultures that hold us back as a nation. It was my mother that made the difference for me. She defied the odds, but not everyone can do that. I can tell you, if I, if I can tell you how many job applications, personally, because I'm a public figure, the job applications I have in my inbox are all so many. Because of that child marriage, poor health care and poverty, then we need to talk about these issues, about how child marriage leads to poor access to education, which leads again to poverty. When we break the silence, we can make the difference. Today, as a young man and entrepreneur, I feel that the best way I can help my community is breaking this silence. It is talking about these issues by writing these books, uh, the, the, the books, and I portray these stories. And uh, I've also personally found out that young people are going to pop culture and media for example, films, and, and people are going to watch films, so I go where the audience is going. I've developed, the, I've developed Yuliwood, the Ugandan Hollywood, and we are creating authentic Ugandan stories that are changing the narrative. For example, with films like that, young people are now looking at this issue more broadly. Uh, I've worked with a certain organization called Plan International, and uh, we've done a, a project called My Body, My Future. And in this campaign, we moved to, to over 300 schools and communities, collected 39,000 signatures, and petitioned government to give us health services, health information, and it has worked out because government has brought new legislation and youth-friendly centers have been introduced in very many. Um, health centers. To me, this is a way of expressing my freedom. I like the case, I've, I've been doing some research about the situation in 
Guatemala, and I found out that some societies are still embracing child marriage. But when we come together as young people, because this is a generation that has um, that has grown on so much, on, that has grown on progress. We have said no to things that our uh, our fathers, our grandfathers had refused, uh, had, had had fostered. So I think when we come together as young people, we can create this difference, and it starts with you. Gracias. <laughs>